start for Kornikova. First point, she rifled her favorite, the two-handed backhand down the line for a winner. And then doing what Hingis does so well, following up a very deep approach shot with a nice drop volley. What's your feeling at the start of this match, Pam? Hingis overwhelming favourite or a real chance for Anna? I would say a, a chance for Anna, unlike the two times they played last year at Slams where it was all Hingis straight sets comfortably. I think today Kornikova should go in with some confidence because last week in Sydney, Hingis lost to Venus Williams, her first ever loss to one of the other four great teams that are out on the tour. Now look at this service action. Reaches up so beautifully, effortlessly, extends wonderfully towards her target. I mean, obviously, Hingis is still the favorite. She's number one in the world, whereas Kornikova comes into this at number 30. And that kind of rally favors Hingis. Kornikova is going to have to be very careful that she doesn't get into these long baseline rallies because Hingis has the safer game. So unforced errors from Kornikova is going to be a key stat to watch. See, there you have a 40-15 lead in a game. Kornikova serving the ace to go up 40-15, and then three straight points. Hingis now with a break point. Oh. That's a bonus, isn't it, for Hingis? Because Kornikova looked in control of 40-15. The world number one breaks in the opening game. Hot town, summer in the... What a day in Melbourne. Yarra River in the Melbourne Park Complex. Oh, oh. Perfect conditions. Low 20s the temperature. Bluer sky imaginable. Well, that's going to be another key shot for Kornikova, the two-handed backhand. That's her most powerful ground stroke and you can see there is still good room for error over the net pretty close to that sideline though Kornikova with another lead in a game lost the lead in the first one from 40-15 So now that kind of miss on the forehand tells me that Hingis is a little bit nervous. She usually doesn't miss shots by that big a margin. So this is Kornikova's fifth game point. She's 0 for 4 so far. If she loses this game, that's going to spell big trouble. Out. Well, Leanne White overruling. It looked out, Pam. I've got a great view here. Honestly, look clearly out. And it was a decisive call 
Probably out on the sideline, Bruce. Yes. Yep. Another miss smash, and joining me upstairs now, Bruce, is Nicole Bracky. And Nicole, what does Kornikova have to do to challenge Hingis today? Well, eliminate those sort of shots there, a lot of loose shots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Having two break point opportunities there, you've got to make the most, or actually three break point opportunities against players like Hingis. And then we see a mum and coach Pavel Slozel. You've really got to make the most of those opportunities. That's the hardest thing for players playing, say, the number one player, Hingis. You, once you get those opportunities, you've really got to take them and make the most of them. Well, Kornikova's outplayed Hingis the first two games. She led 40-15 on her serve with some impressive points, and then the unforced errors crept in, led love 40 on Hingis's next game, and again unforced errors. This game is a must. Well, that could be the biggest difference between the two players, is they both have great ground strokes, they volley well, they're caught awareness, well, especially Hingis is excellent. But up in the mind, which we know can play such a big part of tennis, is the big difference between these two. And welcome to Liz Smiley. So here we have a situation, Liz, where Anna led 40-15 in the opening game and then didn't hold. Led love 40 against Hingis and didn't break, and now it's 40 love. Must hold. Certainly is a must hold. Hingis, as we've mentioned earlier, we really haven't seen the best of her yet. This Australian Open. So she has. Important. It's two games to one. Hingis with a break. In this, the opening set. Well, there you see Michael Klem, an interested spectator out on court four, where a match between Ai Sugiyama and Magdalena Grabowska of Poland. And, of course, Michael Klem with pretty strong ties to Poland, having an interested watch there, Nicole. There you can see on the replay, Hingis with a stretch, one-handed backhand volley. Well, these two were up against each other only last night on centre court, playing doubles against one another. And Hingis and Lucic, just too good for Korniakova and Larissa Nyland. Let's see if Kornikova can come back in a game. Hingis was up 30 love, now 30 all. Well, the game's just slipping away for Korniakova. Not playing the big points all that well at the moment. Well, this 
this is what Jeez. I love to see. Girls of, well, especially Cornea Cova, 16 years of age, coming to the net behind such good ground strokes. Not letting your opponent back into the point. Well, these two are going to play each other for years and years, and because they are good all-court players, we're going to see some terrific matches and points every time. Oh. Oh. Juice. Yep, tossing the ball up in the sun there. It's the tough end. We see a little of the cross court down the line drill happening there. Now Kornikova has this comeback game point from 30 love on the Hinga serve. Chance to level. She's done it too, Pam. So it's two games apiece in the opening set. The backhand there from Hingis, definitely her best side. Really hit any winners from any angle. Perhaps Kornikova really, after the wide serve, should have just done more with that second shot. Oh. She's also got a good forehand as well. Well, both passing shots going down the line, and perhaps it's the inexperience of Kornikova when she makes the approaches. She looks to be covering too much of the cross court. Of course, both of those were very near the sideline. Wow. Liz, that's just a great lob. That's hard to do. Well, we've certainly talked about Hingis's court sense, haven't we? And you just get a sense of it down here on court. She's that one step faster to the ball and it's not necessarily that she's quick around the court but she just sees what is going to happen and it, it's a tough shot to hit a lob off a run it's uh she certainly does most things pretty well doesn't she two more break points Serve hard to hold here in the opening set. Hingis edges it front again. It's three games to two. Great struggle going on here in the opening set between the champion and the challenger here. It's 15-30. Hingis serving at 30. Well, that was really a bad miss after a pretty good drive from the backhand and then drop shot. Definitely, I thought she maybe could have hit the roll backhand cross court, Korniakova. Hingis was already down that line. Another thing that's difficult too on this centre court, because there is so much room behind the back of the baseline and on the side of the court, you can get into trouble from running too far back. And here we see Hingis's service action.
there is an example of that role that you're talking about you wish Kornikova had. Well, you're fine, and I'll be surprised if Hingis doesn't do this a couple of times during the match. When she's got Kornikova wide on the forehand, she uses the roll exceptionally well to get the players out of the court. There's that call out that I can't stand when young players do it when they point out. And there's a few players that do it. Yeah, and actually, not, they're not always the young ones either. Some of the older ones. Occasionally, players get warned not to make the call with their finger. Juice. Well, that's a great serve to bring it back to Juice. Liz. Liz, she just plays within herself, doesn't she? She certainly does, Pam. And it's interesting. Um, there's Pavel Slozel, who is h helping Anna Kornikova. And I think it's a, a wise choice of coach for her. Obviously, Pavel was with Steffi Graf for so many years, so he knows what it takes to coach a, a top player in the world. And I think he can only benefit Anna Kornikova in her quest to be the best in the game. Martina Hingis lost that point. She was not retreating. She camped on the baseline. Kornikova really is getting a lot of penetration on her ground strokes, and it's evident that uh, Martina Hingis is going to plant herself on that baseline. She's not going to take a step back. She's going to hit a lot of half volleys if she needs to. So it's a definite pattern here by Kornikova. Oh! So that's just a waste. If she's going to stay with Hingis. She's got to cut down the silly unforced errors. Kornikova has 12 so far. Nine to Hingis. Game Hingis. It's a struggle, wasn't it? But uh, an important game in the context of the opening set. Hingis leads four games to two. So men are lookalikes. Have a look at this. <laughs> well, somehow I do not think so. <laughs> Maybe they missed the party the other night at the well, Hyatt. And the skirt's not short enough. <laughs> oh, look, I could go on for another hour if you like, Nicole. <laughs> well, Liz mentioned the player party. The uh, theme this year was to come along and drag. They encouraged any of the, the guys. A couple of them did. And they were beautiful. <laughs> 15 been a very good start to this match. Each of the games has been competitive. It was one love game in the third game of the opening set, but uh, Anna looks as if uh, she's on the same court as Martina and should be there right now. She's going with her all the way. I just keep thinking back to the first two games of the match and how vital they were for Kornikova. Having five game points in those two games, but failing to win either one. And that's why she finds herself trailing 2-4 right now.
Venus really is such a great mover. For someone who doesn't look like she's going to be a great mover, she covers so much court. Well, she anticipates extremely well and doesn't get too far behind the back of the baseline, so she doesn't end up running twice as far as she really has to. Two break points. And now suddenly there's a gap, isn't there, on the scoreboard. Ingus is five games to two in front of Corner Cove in the opening set. Welcome back here. It's Andre Agassi. Beautifully constructed point by Anna Corner Cove. The opening point of this game. She was out of position there. Came up with a little roll, Nicole. She's well inside the baseline here. It's 5-2, Hingis serving for the opening set. Oh! And Nicole got all excited up here when Kornikova played the little role, but of course, a little different position in the court. No, I remember my dad telling me when I used to play, I just don't hit that shot enough. And you see it now watching from this position. And that one wasn't so deep also. She's gone for more top spin and a little bit shorter. I get the feeling she's really moving Hingis around. And I look at Martina, I know she's a great mover and you're a great anticipator, but uh, I think, you know, she's had, had such a great year last year, Hingis. She uh, has been in better shape in her life, and I think some of the girls are looking at that and thinking, how can they take advantage of that? And I think this is what Kornikova's trying to do today. She's had a lot of drop shots. So breaks back. Well, the thing everyone's been talking about is this roll shot. And what we mean by this is instead of, after this wide serve here, Kornikova goes deep with her backhand. Instead, she needs to go in this part of the court. And you can see for Hingis, it's a much easier passing attempt because of the depth instead of that roll that creates the angle. You better make sure you cover the line, though, with Martina Hingis, because she's probably going to get to it. Kornikova won that point. What was she doing heading all the way to the left? It was almost like she's looking for the cross court here. Now, it's a subtle thing, but when you hit this kind of good approach, where is she? She's way over to the left. Well, you can be the X point on coming to the net, Pam. <laughs> Over, cover the line. Well, I mean, Anna has hit quite a few drop shots, and I think Martina, you know, the penny's dropped. She's looking for that shot. So not only now does the drop shot have to be perfect, but you've got to make sure that you cover the next ball. Well, see, this is what we mean by shot selection. In the last two points, an example, the drop shot not covering the line, and then that last wasted backhand up the line, the 18th unforced error. <laughs> Kornikova did this well at Wimbledon. She got to the semifinals, and she came to net a lot in her run through to the semis, and the the touch on the volley was very impressive, even harder, obviously, on rebound ace. There's the one, short in the court. Still hit pretty hard, though, wasn't it? But maybe if it would have gone deep, Kornikova well, Hingis would have got the depth if it was deep. She could have to tossed up another high lob. Oh. 
Needed it, didn't she? And done well. We're back on serve. Christoph Van Gas. Three breaks of serve against Kornikova in the opening set. Two against Martina Hingis. It's 5-4. She serves for it again. As she did at 5-2. It's been a really good match. Ooh, how big was that first point? Well, Hingis, in her match against Barbara Rittner was up 5-love, was she? And then got back to 5-4. Five all, Actually, five all. Five all. Yep. So it should be an interesting uh, game, this one. Oh! Ooh, close. Pam, I think the experience factor is such a thing too. Here, Hingis is only nine months younger, but this is a 13th Grand Slam event. She's won uh, so many titles and Grand Slam championships, and for Kornikova, just her fifth, there's a, there's a big gap, isn't there? But Bruce, the gaps can so quickly change with these young players. That's what's amazing. You saw Venus Williams at the U.S. Open with her run through to the finals. Kornikova, the semis of Wimbledon. Well, such experienced campaigners at such a young age. But the shot selection here under pressure has been interesting. There's, just sitting here, there's been a huge difference in the experience factor for Hingis. Well, at the point at 15 all, we saw Martina look up to the clouds and sort of poke her tongue out. She knew she was lucky. And a corner cover had missed that forehand angle she'd went, she'd gone for. does extremely well is that she doesn't feel that she needs to hit right near the lines to win the point. She hits well within, say, a couple of feet of the lines to set the point up. And how smart with her as we look at Melanie Molliner. <laughs> I don't know, I've got a, <laughs> little itches there, I guess. But how, there. how smart was that of Hingis to buy herself time with that high loopy one, or, or not let Kornikova, rather, buy time by coming in and taking it in the oh. air? She just is, she's always a step ahead, or most times. We've talked about Martina Hingis's anticipation. Pam, do you think that is something that you can teach a player, or is that something that you just have? Well, I think in this case... Melanie Molitor, the mom, was working with a pretty gifted thing, but I think Melanie Molitor, her mom and coach, has done an outstanding job bringing that instinct to the forefront because you need reinforcement. It's one thing to have instinct, but you still need encouragement to come through with it. Yes, well done. Hold serve to love, opening game of the second set. Martina Hingis won the first set, six games to four. To centre court. Thanks, John. This is the uh, opening point of the second game of the second set. And just another great lob. And it's like, it's obviously the shot to play, but Hingis, that's what she does well. She plays the shot that must be played nearly every time. I don't think you can teach someone that. I think they just know. See, I, would, I, I think it's a combination of things. I, I really think the mom's done an outstanding job. She really knows her stuff. I just think you don't, you're not born with a fact to know to take mid-court volleys and come in. I mean, there's certain things that are definitely instinctual, but there's other things that you need some help. So that's just wasted opportunities as we see Korn, Kornikova having a bit of mumble to herself. Perhaps, Liz, maybe the frame of mind to be able to be the all-court player and to be able to, to quickly recognize, make decisions on the court. Perhaps that's the instinctual part. And it's difficult to combat that, isn't it, Pam? I mean, you know, you say to someone, all right, you need to move around, you need to come to the net, but you need to know what to do when you get there. Like right yeah, now, we're is. watching Kornikova and she's 
She's got the foundation to play Hingis the correct way. But right now, she's, she doesn't know where to look for the next shot. And just a few loose shots that come in. And there we have. There's Pete Sampras, who will play uh, Hisham Arazi tomorrow in the uh, fourth round, defending his title here, as Martina Hingis is. And a corner cover at one all in the second set. See, I just think it's great that both players at, at 17 and 16, they're willing to throw in the serve volley point. They're willing to do all these different kind of things that we didn't see from the young players five, ten years ago. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, even, even longer ago, the players were one-dimensional, quite happy to stay on the baseline and wait till the girl down the other end made the error. But I think the change in equipment, girls just hitting the ball so much harder these days, you just cannot expect to win if you're one-dimensional anymore. You really must be able to take the short ball either in the air or play an approach shot and be able to volley when you get there. And really, of the five young ones that we talk most about, the two Williamses, Kornikova, Hingis, and Lucic, the only one that's not showing the versatility is Lucic, who we saw play Maoli the other night and have great power. But where is the all-court stuff? She doesn't have the all-court stuff yet, but I like Lucic's attitude. She, uh, she impressed me with her attitude. She's pretty feisty the other night. I mean, that's one thing about the five of them. You can't say they're shy. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. Well, that's good, isn't it? You need contrast. I think that's what people like to see in tennis. They like to see the, the fiery competitor against the cool one, the serve volleyer against the baseliner. She's starting to look comfortable on serve at the moment, Kornikova. Leads two games to one in the second set. For that sharp competition, it's 40-15, Hinga serving. Gosh, I better get going then. Got to enter that contest. It's a good example of what we've been talking about, that sort of theme that Kornikova really had that point, didn't she? She did, and look at the way Hingis moves diagonally towards that. She just doesn't run straight across. She knew that Kornikova was probably going to go cross-court. Twelve of the last thirteen 15. points on her own serve corner cover from the ninth game of the first set. The drop shot's difficult on this surface. Really doesn't sit up. Thirteen. I think it's the one who's playing the loose points on the serve of corner cover. herself and wait for it she actually goes to the ball hits it and then just keeps running well, now a big point for Kornikova after having the 30 love lead and holding serve comfortably the first two games Kornikova, to me, just seems to rush a lot. She doesn't seem to take her time, and I guess that's why some of the loose shots come in. She doesn't really... I know she thinks about her shots, but sometimes she just needs to take that extra little time. Jeez. Well, at 153 Ks, if you are going to serve volley, you've got to place it perfectly. That one just not quite making Hingis uncomfortable enough. A wasted opportunity. Well, that one needed to be more directed to the 
single sideline. He's not doing enough with that volley. But it's still encouraging that she's coming to the net. She's not afraid to come to the net. Jeez. Crucial game, Pam, isn't it, this one? I mean, could uh, tell us so much about the end result of this match. Well, we saw the first set be decided by games where Kornikova led, then lost the game. Here she led 30 love and then had a game point. There was just a break point for Hingis. Advantage Hingis. That's where I wish sometimes Kornikova would be a little more comfortable with a one-handed slice. When she's really on the run like that last one and she's stretched, it would be good if she could let go and be confident with a slice. It's another thing Hingis does so well. Oh, Martin Hingis just beaten for pace of shot. And I think we've noticed that today, Bruce. I think Kornikova Jeez. is really hitting the ball harder than what Martin mm. Hingis is today. No doubt about that. Well, she, she hit the ball harder at Wimbledon as well, and it's oftentimes it's the rocket off the two-handed backhand. Advantage Hingis. We see all the time, though, harder doesn't ne necessarily mean better. Now, fighting off three break points here is big for Kornikova. If she can find a way to hold this service game, we'll find out in the next game whether or not the momentum can shift her way. Kornikova looking at the linesman there, but that ball looked well in. She's almost in your bunker. I was just about to say exactly the same thing, Pam. <laughs> Just keep on walking, pull up a chair, <laughs> tell us what you think. Well, she got to it quite, a, quite easily. She was a long way behind the baseline, though. Yeah. She was never, ever going to play an effective shot from back there. Maybe a lob, huh? Ah! Hmm. Advantage Hingis. Well, the pattern continues. Kornikova just cannot win the deuce point. And Hingis Jeez. can't win the ad point. <laughs> Just waits, doesn't she? Kornikova sometimes coming in on a wing on a prayer, really. I mean, it's good and well to come in, but you've really got to choose the right shot. Jeez. Boy, Pam, you're good at this. How long have we been going and how many points? How many break chances has uh, Martina had? Five? Six. Six. So Anna's right in this. What a game this has uh, turned out to be. And that's the first time the pattern's been broken in a long, long while. Crowd's pretty much behind Kornikova. Jeez. That's the way it happens, and sometimes these marathon games, it just... We'll just go on and on. Bruce, I'm going to count up the points now. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Eight, four, 
taking your shoes off yet? No, yes. it's still on. <laughs> this is the 21st point of this rally. Eight deuces. Do you all agree this is crucial, though? Whichever way this goes, this game? Certainly is. Anna Kornikova's really got to stay with it here. It would just be a huge psychological boost for Kornikova to win this little war. She's done it. That's big, isn't it? Very neatly poised now, this match. Anna Kornikova and Martina Hingis. And the 16-year-old is taking it right up to the 17-year-old champion. Losing nothing here. 6-4 Hingis, the opening set. Kornikova leads three games to two in the second. 15. That's the only thing you can criticize about the way Kornikova's played this match. She'll suddenly just come up with a high-risk return on a big point that's not necessary. Well, that's too good. I think that's just too good. The approach was fine. Kornikova is doing a lot of looking up to her corner here and she just did it then so obviously she's been told that this is what she needs to do and she knows she needs to do it but sometimes it, uh, when things don't come off it's it's pretty tough to keep doing she moves too early Kronikova and she comes in for the approach she picks one side or the other quite quickly. And Hingis, Hingis, yeah, holds off. Hingis is great at kind of watching. Again, Hingis, Hingis holds. Hingis. It's three all now in the second set. Anna, you're going to love it. Anna won just four games against Martina the French when they first played. Five at Wimbledon. She's got seven on the board here. That last game, though, was a big let off at Love 15. Well, Hingis has to start to look for that one when she's coming to the. when Kornikova's coming to the net. I think she's done it about three times. I mean, it's tough shots to hit, the sort of drop volley. She does it with ease. 13. Her second ace of the match. Well, Kornikova led 30-love in her last service game before it ended up going 22 points long and before she finally won it. She needs to hang on to these leads and have some routine service games. Yes, for serve. Kornikova might be right here. You can see Georgina Clark in the background, all the referees and tour directors right behind Kornikova. You know, earlier we were saying how she needed to watch the line. The last two backhands, <laughs> what do you do? Well, it's very difficult for the umpire to call that line. Kornikova was in the way, in her vision. I think on that last replay, it definitely looked out. It's a positive response, isn't it? Plus the crowd, you know, the crowd can have an effect on the match too. The crowd really giving Anna Kornikova a big cheer when she sent down that serve. She's done it. She held again, so it's 4-3. In the second set. Big crowd here. I know it's only the second set, but you feel like you're a bit on the knife edge here. Anna's mum and 
coach. And Liz, I think we're all hoping it goes to a third set because we're going to find out a lot about Anna and a fair bit about Martina if it does, if this, ma if this match can go on. Most definitely. You're finding out something now. Hingis is 15. Well, coming up with the goods with that serve, but uh, she knows she has a game on her hands here. Another example, a great tennis, sure, but another example that Anna probably should have won the point in the end. Right here with the volley, Bruce. Yep. Yep. Just didn't hit far enough away from Martina Hingis. Martina lunging. I don't know how much string that ball got then, but uh, enough racket to get it back over. Oh, that's too big. Just beat the pace of shot, Martina Hingis there. Well, I think this is, sorry Nicole, but I think this is the hardest that Martina Hingis has hit the ball so far in the match. See the unforced errors from Kornikova. She's nine ahead in that category. But in the forced errors, the other way around, oh, she's eight ahead. So you add those two up, and it's a very even match. Kornikova's forcing the play more, going to make some more errors. Oh, so we're up to four all. Just look at four these two, and you wonder whether or not... They can possibly have a rivalry or play as many times as Chrissy and Martina play or any of the, the teams that are within a year and a half of each other's age right now. Remember, Martina Navratilova and Chris Everett played each other 80 times. This is their third meeting. They got a long way to go, but they're 16 and 17. Of course, people's careers are not as long now tend to play well into their 30s the way Martina and Chris did. And you did. Thank you, but I, I didn't play too well in my 30s. <laughs> Except when Liz carried me around the doubles court. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, 30. Gee. Well, this is the difference between the two. We can see in this game here. But unlike the two matches last year at the Grand Slams, Kornikova's definitely staying with her in this match. Regardless of what happens, Kornikova's got to come away saying, yep, I can beat her. Well, now it's the other way around. Hingis has let Kornikova off the last three points with a couple of unforced errors. Love 30, there was all sorts of pressure. Double faults and then forcing a couple of errors and a couple of unforced, and it's 5 4 Kornikova. Welcome back in centre court, seven sport of the Australian Open. Martina Hinga serving at 4 5. about the firepower from Kornikova. Hingis doesn't really hit the ball that hard. 
She seems just to be able to move the people around the court, jerk them around. Oh! 15. Two games in a row, the love 15 point is wasted from Kornikova. I think that can be done more on the Hingis serve. Sometimes it's your best opportunity in a point. Two points away from the set, Kornikova. 14-30. Just rush that. Kornikova has really stepped up in the last couple of games. <laughs> that always happens. <laughs> Boy, whatever the outcome of this match, You'd have to say Jeez. at the end that for periods in this match, Kornikova's outplayed Hingis. Well, it's no place for the faint-hearted, is it? Got to no. give credit to Kornikova. She's certainly uh, sticking to a game plan. <laughs> game plan of going for it, coming in. She had this before against Hingis in her life, a set point. Ooh, pressure on this second serve. Coming right in. She's done it. and Martina Hingis back on court. Martina broke and that's a love in the opening game of the third set and then went off court to uh, change her clothes. Anna went with her and now we're back here. So it's uh, one love. Well, Mel Melanie's looking a little bit worried there. She would have been a lot more worried had Martina Hingis not played such a good first game and on the other hand, Kornikova with a double fault really let Hingis step all over in the first game. See whether the momentum switch was just that brief four point run or if it's going to continue. I think that bathroom mm -hmm. break may have done Anna Kornikova a bit of good, maybe. She seemed like she was getting faster and faster, maybe just to kind of break up the pace for her. This is Hingis' second ace. Same number as Kornikova. Oh! Boy, you seldom see her miss a volley by that much. I think it was the pace and open racket face. Oh. 
Well, that second serve needs to be jumped on. Surprise Kornikova didn't go for the outright winner, but still gets a break point. Yes, first serve. What comes around goes around. You see her mum clenching her fist there. One game. Pretty even scoreline. Is it an even money bet, do you reckon? Or do you still think this is twos on or threes on as she would have started? Oh, let me think about that. It's just the unforced errors. If she can keep them intact, then she can win this match. And this time we noticed Kornikova moving in when she hit the drop shot. It's been our feeling down here, hasn't it, that Anna's got a chance to win here. It's whether she's ready to win. For sure, and that's a big hurdle. You know, for someone that's up and coming, it's a big hurdle to overcome. Oh, well, I really... Like, oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry, Liz. Go ahead, Pam. Well, I was going to say, I think if Venus Williams had not beaten Hingis last week in Sydney, I don't think Kornikova would have come in with as positive a thought. I think if anyone believes that they can win a match and beat a... The number one player in the world is that Chris girl out there now serving, Anna Kornikova. Too long to come in. You should have come in on that. The one, the shot before. This one. Now that's where Hingis would have been all over it, all over the floaty one, and hit the volley early. Can Hingis? Close. Oh. Well, it's hard to hold serve right now, isn't it? Hingis 2-1. Hingis leads two games to one. A long ball there. Letting Hingis off the hook. But still two break chances here to go back to two all in the third set. Play. And that's the third consecutive match, or game, I should say, that Kornikova has broken Hingis' to serve. Broken the final game of the second set, and Martina hasn't been able to hold in this set. Neither's Anna, by the way. We talk about the versatility of Hingis, and there's a couple of things probably I'd like to see her try and do, is maybe use her slice backhand a little bit more, and maybe throw up a few high, loopy ones, just to change Kornikova's game plan just a little bit. Hunger's going to count for a lot from here on in, I reckon, at this stage of the match. Despite her much talked yes. about looks, she's very hungry, Kornikova. Some people have talked about how, you know, all this talk about the way she looks on the court and all the ease of getting big endorsements and all this stuff, that it's hurt her competitive spirit, but I don't think it has at all. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting, Pam, to see how she coordinates everything as her career progresses, how she handles it all. Here we have this time the roll forehand. 
instead of going the other way to the backhand. 14-15. Well, I know we're back on serve, but it's actually the first time Anna's had a nose in front of this match. It's 3-2 in the third set. Well, why isn't this man working, for crying out loud? John Alexander, well, I see why he needs to do a little work on the court. Just look at the middle there. He needs to do a little two-on-ones, don't you think, Liz? Is that slow-mo or...? Uh... No, we've quickened it up. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing later today with Denty against Ross Case and Jeff Masters. But uh, this is crucial here. Corner Cova, if you were betting on this match right now, would be favourite for the first time, wouldn't you? Just. He never gave me a reply on the even money. I, re I reckon she's odds on just slightly. I'll tell you what, Bruce. If you go against the number one player in the world in women's tennis the last 20 years, at any point, you're in deep trouble. They just find ways. That's a good point. But, la end of last year, Hingis Ooh. lost to Kutzer in the semifinals of Leipzig. Leipzig lost in the quarters to Raymond in Zurich and lost in the chase championships in the quarters to Pierce. 13 for and this is also why two really good points from Hingis, a retrieving point and then the free point with the serve. Well, Liz, that's just a great gap. Well, but where was Anna? Mm. I mean, we've seen her move forward quite a bit in this match, but she didn't look for that ball to come back over the net. Game Hingis. Jeanette Pan. Hingis just sent Kornikova a nice little message in that game. And I've just changed the odds slightly, Pam. <laughs> you did right. <laughs> Gee, that was a determined game by Martina, wasn't it? It was almost justice, really, because earlier on in the second set, I think, or late towards the second set, she got the leg cord. I don't know, I still think that if Martina Hingis is going to win this match, I think she's got to get off the baseline. You can't rely on your opponent. If Kornikova hits those big ground strokes in, she's going to win. If she misses them... Um, you know, Hingis is going to win, but I'd like to see Martina take a little bit more command. Oh. Well, she covered the line, but the lob just was never going to be good enough. Well, the other number for Kornikova that's very good is the few unforced errors she's committed recently. They're both in the 30s on unforced errors. Kornikova at 39, Hingis at 33. That's very close considering that Kornikova's the one trying to knock off winners more so than Hingis. Oh, it's good tennis, isn't it? Well, that's the first time we've seen Anna Kornikova really handle that slice backhand from Martina Hingis. Just not trying to hit a volley off it, but playing a great angle back cross-court. She's seen enough of those shots today. a shot of Hingis that needs to find a little bit more range in the third set is her down the line backhand. It's one of the reasons she got to be number one in the world last year, had the best one. See if the chips are really tight or the chips are down, you've got to figure Kornikova is going to come up with that kind of error a lot more than Hingis and that's why you still give Hingis the edge. Martina's mad at herself. She was running way before Anna Kornikova hit that drop volley. She knew that it was coming. Jeez. Unfortunately, just not being able to get it back over the net once she got there. Clenched fist there from Anna Kornikova. She knows this is a big game. Advantage. 
advantage here is. Some changing up there, Nicole. I think, well, you notice she didn't come in and take it early. She went back instead of moving forward, taking them early. It's definite change of pattern, the loopy forehand down the line to Kornikova. Cheers. Well, if the fifth game of the second set was important, this is doubly, isn't it? It's a huge game now. And they both know it. Well, she's pumped, taking that forehand early on the rise. Big, big, big game for that young woman. It's 4-3 in the third. It's 4-3 in the third. Ford Falcon is the only Australian family sedan that can pull 2,300 kilograms. That's why Ford's number one. It's going to be an uphill battle to get our young athletes to the Olympic Games, but every time you become a Bedalla fella, we'll contribute five cents to help get them to the Games. Bedalla, we're one of the fellas behind Australia's Olympic team. The Swiss know that to give your skin softness, it needs an exact proportion of calendula and elderflower. To reduce the appearance of fine lines, fruit acids must be precisely balanced with wild pansy and sage. To give you clear, radiant skin, St. Ives have developed the Swiss Formula range. Swiss Formula, for beautiful, healthy looking skin. So what a moment here with Martina Hingis serving her mum. Melanie Molitor looking on. It's 3-4. The rafter game, by the way, match tonight will be on the big screen here in the garden for those people that are here today with ground passes. They'll be able to watch it. You'll be able to watch it on seven. Great shot around Australia. 6.30, our telecast tonight. Well, I know she's a beautiful young woman, but I now know what all the fuss has been about for Kornikova. She's a genuine player, isn't she? They don't give away semi-finals at Wimbledon, Bruce. No. I think another difference, too, has been the return of serve from Kornikova compared to that of Hingis. A number of free points. Oh. It's another Love 15 game where Kornikova just lets Hingis off. Now that last return, she just got it nicely back into play. She didn't, it's not like she had the winning shot right there. So she looped it back safely and then Hingis made an unforced error. Well, the pressure's on Hingis, isn't it? She's the one that's down 3-4. She must hold. She's got a lot more to lose too. I mean, she's defending a championship, isn't she? And she's had a, a delicate moment in her career. She's had a great year last year, won three of the four Grand Slams. You know, things haven't started out this year the way that she would have liked them to start out for Martina Hingis. Coupled with those losses, the end of 97. It's Graham Hingis. Oh. Liz, I was just wondering if there was any wind or it was it calm conditions down there on centre court. Calm. Sorry to jump in, but uh, <laughs> I think that's the only thing that Bruce is calm <laughs> right now because everything else is pretty If you've got a list, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> There's an outside uh, court result coming up in a moment. Kiefer has got through against Colmar. Bad luck for the Frenchman having to retire. So the Germans still going in the men's singles. I don't know about you guys, but I've got sweaty palms here. You feel like it's a watershed match, don't you, in women's tennis? 
It's turning into a real classic. Well, when you're 16, you come up with some of the great shots, but some of the real bonehead plays, that last drop <laughs> shot, not good at all. Tell me how you really feel, fam. I don't think too many people would have called Anna a bonehead before. But that's why you have sweaty palms, because you never know what in the world's going to happen. See, now two in a row there. It's just... Kornikova's the one that swings back and forth so much more than Hingis. And, of course, if she can have a great swing here suddenly, she, it could be over in six, eight points. On four stairs, Kornikova now creeping a bit ahead, 11. Two break points. And this time, Hingis clenching the fist. It's a bold move to serve volley. 15-30. Yeah, this time holding up the racket there. And a terrible game. Yep, she's quickened everything up again, just as Liz said before the uh, the break before. And Hingis will come out and surf it after this. Well, this is the real bonehead drop shot play from Kornikova. This gets a big X. But of course, I didn't have it set up to do the X. I had it set up to do the circle. My bonehead. Just what Hingis wanted, wasn't it? An easy point to start as she serves for the match. Six, six straight points since that drop shot. Definitely fallen off. And this gives Hingis three match points. Net for serve. She loves to serve volley when she's three match points up. Bruce, I'm going to put the money on Hingis. <laughs> oh, aren't you brave? <laughs> amazing really the shot selection at 15 love it led to eight straight points for Hingis just think of four all and love 15 actually 15 love Kornikova's serve yeah and Martina got through but I think she knows better than anyone that uh, it was a skin of the teeth job and that Maybe that was the first real battle between these two young women that will take place over the next few years. I just felt, Liz, had it been gymnastics, figure skating, diving, this young woman would have got more points. If it had been subjective and you'd seen the way they played today, she actually outplayed Martina for more than 50% of that match. I agree with you, Bruce. I think that she did outplay the number one player in the world, but unfortunately for her, um, just couldn't quite sustain what she what she needed to do and um, you know that's why Martina Hingis is the number one player in the world and Nikki for Martina at this stage of the tournament that's probably a pretty good result to have a really tough three-setter I think she needed that tough three-setter as we can see she'll play now the winner of Bazuki or Van Roost but Hingis having really only one match last week in Sydney and losing and then coming here and you know just finding her way through the first couple of rounds and she really needed a test and she came through it. I, she, I don't know, you ha might have to ask Craig to ask her that question, how she felt about having that three-cent match, whether she liked it or not. Well, this young one will be back, won't she? Oh, uh, hey, look, she goes off this court, actually. She's been very disappointed, but she now knows that she can beat Martina Hingis, and she did not know that last year. Two winners in a way today, weren't they? Because she's bridged a gap today, you feel, don't you? She has made at least a step forward. And there's a look at the stats. You can see they're almost level with first serve one when they get their first serve in. Hingis just five points higher. Come on down the list a bit more. Winners, 
Many more to Kornikova, particularly off the backhand side. They're just about level on the forehand. Points one a net edge to Hingis, but pretty close. It's the unforced errors that hurt Anna Kornikova. Didn't they grow quickly, Pam? Up to 50. I think it was 39 to 32 or something when we looked exactly. at it. Exactly. And, and there you go. Only three more for Hingis during that spell and 11 for Kornikova. And that's in the crucial part of the third set. Well, Hingis probably looks at it at 4 all in the third set. If she can keep hitting those winners, that's too good. But I'm just going to try and keep getting the ball back, getting it deep and doing what I know. That I, I do best. Yeah, I, I feel she really tightened Hingis myself, but she was so tight, but uh, Kornikova made so many errors that she had to loosen in the end. Craig Willis with uh, the number one player in the world, defending champion Martina Hingis. All smiles. Bruce, thank you. Congratulations. But uh, that second set. Well, yeah, I was kind of, you know, just hanging in there, and but I didn't make too much myself, and, you know, I just tried to come back in the third, and I started playing better. Yeah, she did play well, though, Anna, didn't she? Well, she always comes into it in the second set. She usually loses the first easily, but you know, today I was just, she was just more aggressive in the second set especially, but I tried to make more in the third. But do you think that's the hardest you've hit the ball out there today on centre court? Well, we played doubles yesterday each other and they were hitting just so hard. Mariana is also my doubles partner and she hits the ball so hard. So I was just sometimes watching, but it was a good win for us. We talked the other day about the defence of your first Grand Slam title win here in Melbourne. That must have been a big motivation there today when you were looking down a couple of break points. Well, yeah, especially, you know. Um, yeah, I was just trying, you know, I've lost against Reynolds last week in Sydney, so I just tried to not to do the same mistake as I did there. And I was, you know, probably I'm better in shape now with the heat and I'm more used to it, so that's, that kind of helped me. I didn't need the 10 minutes break, it's probably last week, so I'm, you know, I'm happy. You know, with Ma that win, yeah. Mum's pretty happy over there. You better go and enjoy it and savour the win. 